Hi, folks. Sandy Kreisberg here. Uh, this is our Poets and Quants Handicapping. We've got uh, Dallin Scruggs today. Uh, John, the famous John Byrne is not with us, so it's just me and Dallin. Dallin has a 326 from Brigham Young University. Boo! A 740 GMAT. Yay! And a job at Flint Hills Resources that he's been at since he graduated BYU, Brigham Young University, in April of 2016. Dallin, say hi to everybody, and could you tell us what Flint Hills Resources is and what you do? Yes, hello everybody. Um, work as a hydraulic engineer for Flint Hills Resources. Flint Hills is the refining arm of Coke Industries. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> okay, so, what did how we go? I suggested in our pre pre interview here that the Coke Coke Industries is possibly not a favorite company among admissions directors, although it might be a favorite company among deans of business school. Uh, so my suggestion was to describe that as Flint Hill Resources, and then see if you could take it from there. Yep. <laughs> Flint Hills Resources, uh, approximately about 30,000 employees. We have two fairly large uh, gasoline products refineries, one in Pine Band and one in uh, Corpus Christi, Texas. And uh, they, they do about 100,000 barrels of product a day. And then there's two or Okay, three good. We're just looking for the line yeah. on your resume. This is a general tip. If if you've got a resume and, 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 and the first line is Flint Hill Resources, hydraulic engineer, what we want under that is a kind of two line description of Flint Hill Resources, particularly if it's not a feeder firm. Mm. In other words, because the, one, one of the things the admissions directors want to know is how big is this place? How selective is the job? So you should try and hint at that by just the size of the company. Yeah. So you gotta say it's a petroleum company, 30,000 employees, X amount of revenue, a subsidiary of Coke Industries, yada, yada, yada. Okay. That's, that's real important. Uh, and then just tell us briefly, and, and you've been working there since April of, since that, that's the only job you've had, right? Yeah, two, two positions in the company. So I was selected out of school for a rotational leadership development program. Yeah, that, that's worth selected out of six interns for a two-year training program. Yeah, rotational leadership programs are a plus. It, it, people view those as selective gigs. And you did that for two years, close enough. And what do you do now? Uh, I'm a hydraulic engineer, so I'm responsible for the hydraulic performance of about 600 miles of pipe. And so that includes making sure we can get product to new customers and working with commercial on uh, establishing new deals and then ensuring that the day-to-day -day operation is safe. Yeah. And okay, optimized. what you've done in your resume is very good. What you've highlighted is things that you've improved, okay? Uh, and uh, this thing you you challenge the practice of over designing pumps people yes, business schools like that so you've had a management role within your role as a hydraulic engineer you see they view hydraulic engineering as just smart guy scientifically minded head down kind of guy in other words studying and doing his work but you've got a history of uh getting involved in design and uh, there was another thing you did that was impressive. Oh yeah, you wrote this Duquesne Bible, uh, which was a kind of, you know, a guidebook for how to, how to improve the relationship with butane. So that's, a, we don't need the details, but that's another real positive yep. <laughs> that you should stress. Okay, so where do you want to go to business school? I would like to go to either Harvard or Wharton or Kellogg would be my top three, but I, I'm planning on applying to about 10 schools round one and ranging, uh, you know, I've chosen 10 schools to apply to ranging from 
number one to number 20, all yeah, of which I well, think I'd be okay. happy at. Yeah. 326, 740 GMAT. Uh, Harvard and Wharton accept a lot of engineers. They accept a lot of oil, oil and gas guys. Uh, they typically come from oil and gas majors, and they probably have uh, 730 GMAT and higher GPA. So that's going to be a real competitive cohort for you. The, the white male energy cohort at Harvard, Stanford, and Wharton is pretty competitive. And that's the kind of cohort you'll be in. Yeah. yeah. So those schools are real reaches. That, that's my guess. If you could, uh, who, who are you going to get to write your recommendations? I have my supervisor writing one, and the other is the supervisor of what we call the process control center. So everything that is controlled remotely yes. on all these pipelines uh, is controlled. Well, the pipeline you have to control now is your pipeline into the schools. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. How much, how much control do you have over those guys or how much suggestiveness do you have? They're, they're more than willing to work with me. We've already done a couple drafts of uh, a, a couple sample questions and we're working together on kind of forming that story. What, what they've, my suggestion is what they have to stress is you're no ordinary engineer here, that you've really made a difference and you've got to be able to provide powerful examples of that. That's one thing your recommendations and stress. And the other thing is this peer leadership that we talked about, that even among your peers, you've gotten leadership positions. So I, I don't know whether you've done that, but that would be my suggestions. Yeah. For those guys, the, the recommendations are gonna be real important for the reasons I said, you got this low GPA and you're not from a major. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you gonna say your goal, goals are? Short term, um, going into consulting, hopefully in the Houston, Dallas area where I can keep a foot in uh, energy and oil and gas. Yeah, guys like that's a great, that's a great goal for you. To, yeah. to short term, go to, you know, McKinsey, uh, Bain or BC, BCG, that's fine. Hopefully in an energy practice. And what's long term? Long term would be moving moving into a executive operating role at a mid to large size energy oil and gas firm. All right, uh, good, good, close enough for <laughs> maybe close enough for government work. Uh, it, it, what you want to stress is you want to be an impactful energy leader, particularly given the challenges facing the energy business, you know, and that you know the petroleum is going to be with us for a long time and what you'd like to do is just make it as uh, optimized as possible and explore uh, new energy initiatives energy platforms energy sources that that's got that that aspirational part of it yeah should be part of your long-term goal you get me mm -hmm. you're an energy do-gooder Yes. You, you, so you, what you want to do is have this impact beyond yourself, in addition to what you did say here, which is just, yeah, I, I want to be a good CEO. You want to include this aspirational part. Mm -hmm. And uh, to the extent your recommenders can pick up that, can hum that tune, that would be good too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, the rest of this is pretty good. Uh, I, I, I don't think you're getting into Harvard. I think your chances there are uh, like 20 to 30 percent. Wharton yeah. would be a real reach. Guys like you, uh, guys like you, wind up in places like Darden, which is where your dreams can come true. Mm -hmm. We mentioned in the pre-interview that you knew that, right? Yeah. Have you had contact with people there? Yep, I've uh, reached out to the admissions office and then spoken with two of their current students at Darden. Yeah, what did they say? 
Uh, yeah, you know, they, the students really like the program. Both the students I spoke to are planning on going into consulting short term, and they talked about the case method and the great academic experience that they're having at Darden. Good. Um, I, I think that Darden's a place where if you network, you, you can possibly make a difference. So you should, if there's a way to get a formal interview or a pre-interview, if you could network with the student body, if you could even network through um, the L, your LDS connections, mm -hmm. that, that would be good too. Uh, so th th I think that's your story. Uh, uh, yeah, tuck, smaller, uh, it's your kind of place, but I think it's just going to be a reach there. Uh, and that's, that's the way I'm reading this, Dallin. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, good luck and let us, let us know how it turns out. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Signing off here.